So if you get to the point where your tractor is is not starting or it's it's running really rough uh, and you want to bypass that DPF filter like we're talking about, um, there's there's a couple of spots here where you can allow that exhaust to flow ahead of that DPF unit so that you're not hitting that brick wall of particulate. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to take a look at these two tractors behind me, which seem to be fairly similar and have similar capabilities, but one of them is 25 horsepower and the other is 35 horsepower. And what really intrigues me and has for a while now is why people are so drawn to get a bigger machine with less horsepower. And I've come here today to find someone who can shed a little light on that. So you want to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your, your background? Absolutely. So my name is Jake Swearingen. I own the tractor yard here in Coweta, Oklahoma. Uh, we've been operating this business, family owned, for almost 20 years. Uh, and I, I myself have an engineering degree. When I came out of college, I got a job working in the admissions industry. And as an engineer there, I've developed and designed emissions controls for stationary engines. A lot of like what you would see in tractors such as these. And so... That leads into the main point of the video that this machine is under 25 horsepower and it does not have to have any kind of a regen system. And I think that's a big draw of this machine is that people are trying to avoid that. So my question for you today is how many problems does that regen really cause? And is that something a consumer should be afraid to buy? Sure, so I think consumers should definitely be aware of, of what tractors have uh, emissions controls and which ones do not um, and that that threshold that cutoff is anything less than 30 horsepower uh, you're going to see no emissions controls now anything 30 horsepower and above you'll see dpf filters uh, scr with def fluid or uh, other types of after treatment that, that that different companies have come up with to meet those epa regulations so this dealership carries TYM, Branson, and Bad Boy in tractors. And then in mowers, they've got a full line of, of mower brands and different accessories. They've even got our Hustler mowers. And I find the comparison between these two machines really interesting. They weigh almost the same amount. They've got the same capabilities in terms of lift capacity. But instead of being steered towards this machine, I would gravitate towards this and say, if I'm gonna get a machine that size, I want more horsepower. And so I just kind of wanted your thoughts on that. How much extra capability, when you've got the same hydraulic system on these two, they can both lift 2,200 pounds, how much are you gonna feel that extra horsepower using this machine? Yeah, that's a that's an awesome question. Uh, so the 25 horse tractor versus a 35 horse tractor, you're gonna have a step up in implement size that you can pull. So the 2515, comfortably, you'll pull a five foot brush hog, for example. With a 35 horse, you're gonna be able to step up to a six foot and be able to comfortably operate that piece of equipment. Um, now, as far as the capability of the hydraulic system, they do the same, the same amount of work, but when you have more horsepower, you're gonna be doing that work more efficiently. And I've gotta say, it's just a, a shout out to this. I was skeptical on it. And my friend Tony from Tony's Tractor Adventure, he's been running this machine and the things he does with it is crazy. He's been running, uh, Bombalite forestry mulcher behind this, and I would have said no chance on it. <laughs> they're they're absolutely impressive machines, and we we have sold so many of the 2515 tractors, you wouldn't believe. And this thing's under 20k, isn't it? Under 20k. Pretty wild. So now let's talk about that regen system. How many problems are you really seeing from customers coming in, and there's something wrong with their tractor because of the regen, or the regen failure, or it's left them stranded, or something like that? Right, so um, as many tractors as we sell, uh, we, do, we do see that problem come up often. Uh, almost always it's a simple fix, uh, and, and guys will run into the issue where their tractor uh, DPF will be clogged, and they either can't start their unit, or it's, it's running bad, running rough, uh, and a guy with, with, that doesn't have the background might think that, you know, I've, I've got an engine knock, I've got something bad going on with my tractor. In reality, that DPF filter is just collecting all of that particulate coming off of the burnt fuel, um, and it's come so clogged that the tractor can't breathe. Um, and it'll eventually get to the point where you won't be able to even start it. 
Um, now, not something to be alarmed about. It's just part of what we have to deal with now with emissions regulations. Um, and luckily, uh, we know a thing or two on how to prevent clogging from happening. And if it does get to the point you can't start your tractor, uh, I've got a couple tips that, that can get your tractor moving again and, and show you how to possibly clean that out or at least get it to the dealer so that they can take care of the problem for you. That's a great point that a lot of people might not be aware of. So how do I run my tractor in a way that protects or, or increases the longevity of that system? Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you've got a 35 horsepower tractor, 30 or above, that has a DPF filter on it, uh, the thing that you want to keep in your head is make sure that your exhaust temperature is high enough, often enough, such that the DPF can burn off that particulate as it, as it accumulates. Uh, so things you can do, easy things you can do to, to, to keep from clogging is minimize your cold starts, number one. So when I say cold starts, uh, I don't mean starting it, cranking it up in, in, the, in the winter weather when it's snowing outside. Uh, I mean, starting it, moving it from your house to the shop, killing it, starting it, moving it from the shop to the field, killing it. That right there, as soon as you start your tractor, you're gonna get that plume of unburnt fuel that's gonna to start to cake up on that filter. Diesel engines are made to work. Diesel and engines you, are made to work. You wanna work them harder. And the inclination is like, if I'm not doing anything real intensive, you know, I'll shut it off and save fuel, run it lower throttle, it's a little louder and it wastes fuel if you crank that up. But I, my experience is these things kind of sip fuel like a, a gallon an hour at most, and you're better off just letting it run. You're better off letting it run. So what I tell my customers is try to keep your RPM at all times above that 1500 mark. Um, that's gonna help make sure that your exhaust temperature stays high. And then if you're you know stopping the tractor and working around it for a minute, just, just let it run. You know, Let it run 1500, 2000 RPMs. Let the, let the exhaust temperature do its thing, let it burn off that soot, and you won't run into any problems. Okay, so now what happens, with each model, you're gonna have your manufacturer's recommendation on how it runs its regen and everything, but basically, if it starts doing it, just keep working, keep your throttle up. But if you feel like there's some kind of problem, you said there are some things you can do at that point? Sure, so uh, if you get to the point where you've, you've maybe noticed it uh, clogging up, whether it's performance or a light on the dash, whatever it might be, um, and you've put it off to the point where your tractor is lugging, it's got a knock, or maybe it won't even start. Uh, there's, there's a couple of bypass points, and each tractor is going to be a little different, but there's a couple of things you can do to bypass that filter so that you can move your tractor, start it, and get it to a position where you can work on it. All right, well, can you show us that? Absolutely. So if you get to the point where your tractor is, is not starting or it's, it's running really rough, uh, and you want to bypass that DPF filter like we're talking about, um, there's, there's a couple of spots here where you can allow that exhaust to flow ahead of that DPF unit so that you're not hitting that brick wall of particulate. Um, and one point is going to be right here outside the exhaust manifold. And the other, if you can't get that one, a lot of times it likes to get seized up, uh, is going to be right here on the DPF unit itself uh, some of the lines where it comes in, pulls the pressure reading, you can pull that hose fitting off and bypass it. Now, the next question that I have is, I know it exists, but I don't really understand how it works. So how does the regen system work on a track? It's, it's very simple in how it works. Essentially, all it's doing is capturing the unburned fuel in the form of particulate matter, black soot, capturing it on this filter and it's utilizing the temperature of the exhaust to burn that soot off uh, within the filter so that it doesn't escape to the air. So in doing that, it's got to have a filter mounted to the tractor in the exhaust system. So on this tractor, you can clearly see on top of the engine bay, you've got this giant canister. Um, in this canister, you've got a diesel oxidation catalyst at the very back that's just a pass-through filter that's never going to give any problem. Just like the uh, just like a um, catalytic converter on your car. In front of that, you've got the actual DPF filter, the part that collects soot, the part that gets plugged up. <clears throat> so this filter sits right here. It's gonna pass through this. Um, there's a couple of, of points here where it's gonna take pressure readings pre and post. There's a sensor here that says, hey, this pressure differential is too high, just right. 
however it's going to be. If it's too high, that's when you get the light on your dash. Um, and then if it's way, way too high, that's when you start to see the performance effects, the not starting, and all that. You said, I think you used the term that this was a mechanical system of some kind? Yes. Yep. There's different types, maybe? So, so when it comes down to bypassing the DPF filter, if that need arises, uh, one, one big advantage to the Coupe J engine, or the TYM engine, in the Branson, Bad Boy, and TYM tractors, is that they still use a mechanical injection fuel pump. And because of that, it's not taking any feedback data from the pressure data log. So because it doesn't do that, if that DPF filter was gone, your tractor would still function as normal. And there's some model, some tractors on the market that wouldn't be like that, that are a little more complicated. That's correct. So if you have a tractor that has a common rail injection system, uh, if you've got HU injectors, um, there's going to be there's going to be feedback data pulled from that pressure monitor that's not going to allow you to simply mechanically bypass it. You will have to plug into it, reprogram it, just like you would if you deleted a truck. Now, some people would make the case that having any kind of system like this and having it required by law is really stupid and that no polar bears will be saved by <laughs> running this at a high RPM to burn off the exhaust again. But I don't make any kind of environmental or political commentary, so I won't say that. Nope. Now this tractor is pretty similar, but there's some stuff missing. So obviously we don't have that DPF filter on there. And does that, do you feel like that makes overall maintenance on the engine a lot easier? So it definitely, it, you know, easier access to stuff on top of the engine. Uh, but really all that you're, all that you're gaining without that filter being there is access to the valve cover, which, you know, general maintenance doesn't really dictate going in and running the overhead on these tractors unless you have a running issue. So it's really not hindering that much as far as, as access and maintenance. So in my experience talking to a lot of people, I almost never hear anyone who's actually had a problem with their regen system. But I do kind of think about longevity, that you might want to still be running this tractor after the warranty and maybe 20 years from now. How realistic is it once these tractors are a little older, is, is it, realistic that you could bypass that DEF system at some point or the regen system at some point? Yes, so the regen system. So there there are ways to bypass them. Um, a lot of that I can't go into on video or wouldn't want to. However, there are ways around it um, and you might talk with your dealer and, and they will be able to point you in that direction. But if you do have problems with it outside your warranty, there, there are solutions to that. Yep. And, you know, he works for a company and can only say certain things. But my point of view is that I'm going to leave it the way it is during warranty. But there may come a point in the future where I'd rather just not have that. And I think I think you can do it. So for me personally, as a summary to this, I don't talk to enough people who are having problems with their DPF for me to be afraid to get a, a machine that has a regen system on it. Is that kind of how you feel? Or do you like the simplicity of a machine that doesn't have it? So there's definitely the, the benefit of, of having less things to go wrong, right? But I think anyone in the market for a tractor shouldn't have on their mind a DPF being a deterrent to getting the power that they need. Don't buy less than you need because of it. Exactly. That's it looks like a pretty capable machine over there, doesn't it? It's capable, it's gonna do a lot of work. This machine for a little bit more money is gonna do that work faster and more efficiently. So if you're watching this right now and you wanna buy one of these tractors right here, the tractor yard doesn't just sell locally. So if, if that viewer wanted to buy this tractor, how would they get a hold of you? Absolutely, so yeah, we, we ship tractors all over the continental US. Um, we've, got, we've got tractors online on our website, www.thetractoryard.com, or you can find us on Tractor House. We've got tons of listings there. Lots of package deals, um, tractor loader, however you want to buy it, uh, we can figure it out for you. Uh, we we have prices that will absolutely blow others out of the water, um, and we would love to do business with you. And we've got we've got shipping that we can line out on our end. Uh, you're not too far away from us, and we'd love to do business with you. And if you want to talk to either of us, we will both be at the Oki Homesteading Expo June second and third. So come see us. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.